Chapter Fourteen of Zadig. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox. L i b r i v o x dot org. Zadig, or the Book of Fate by Voltaire. Chapter Fourteen: The Fisherman. When Zadig had travelled some few leagues from Arbogad's castle, he found himself arrived at the banks of a little river, incessantly deploring as he went along his unhappy fate, and looking upon himself as the very picture of ill luck. He perceived at a little distance a fisherman, reclined on a verdant bank by the riverside, trembling, scarce able to hold his net in his hand, which he seemed but little to regard, and with uplift eyes imploring heaven's assistance. I am doubtless, said the poor fisherman, the most unhappy wretch that ever lived. No merchant in all Babylon, it is very well known, was ever so noted for selling cream cheeses as myself, and yet I am ruined to all intents and purposes. No man of my profession ever had a handsomer, more complete housewife than my dame was, but I have been treacherously deprived of her. I had still left a poor pitiful cottage, but that I saw plundered and destroyed. I am cubbed up here in a cell. I have nothing to depend on but my fishery, and not one single fish have I caught. Thou unfortunate net! I'll never throw thee into the water more. More sooner will I throw myself in. No sooner were the words out of his mouth, but he started up and ran to the riverside, like one that was resolutely bent to plunge in and get rid of a miserable life at once. Is it possible, said Zarek, is there then the man in being more wretched than myself? His benevolence and good will to save the poor man's life was as quick as the reflection he had just made. He ran to his assistance. He laid hold of him and asked him, with an air of pity and concern, the cause of his rash intention. "'Tis an old saying that a person is less unhappy when he sees himself not singular in misfortune. But if we will credit Zoroaster, this is not from a principle of malignity, but the effect of a fatal necessity. He was attracted, as it were, to any person in distress, as being one in the same unhappy circumstances. The transport of a happy man would be a kind of insult, but two persons in bad circumstances are like two weak shrubs, which, by propping up each other, are fenced against a storm. "'Why are you thus cast down?' said Zadig to the fisherman. "'Never sink, man, under the weight of your own burden.' "'I can't help it,' said the poor fisherman. "'I have not the least prospect of redress.' I was once, sir, the tip-top man in the whole village of Delbach near Babylon, where I lived, and with the help of my wife made the best cream cheeses that were ever eaten in the Persian Empire. Her Majesty the Queen Astarte and the famous Prime Minister Zadig were very fond of them. I served the court with about six hundred of them. I went the other day in hopes of being paid, but before I had well got into the suburbs of Babylon I was informed that not only the queen but Zadig too had privately left the court. Whereupon I ran directly to Zadig's house, though I never set eye on the man in all my life. There I found the court marshals of the great Desterham plundering, by virtue of his majesty's mandate, all his effects in the most loyal manner. From thence I made the best of my way to the queen's kitchen, where applying myself to the steward of a household and his inferior officers, one of them told me she was dead, another that she was confined in prison, a third, indeed, said that she had made her escape by flight. All in general, however, assured me, for my comfort, that my cheeses would never be paid for. From thence I went, with my wife in my hand, to Lord Orcans, who was another of my court customers, of whom we begged for shelter and protection. The favour, I confess, was readily granted to my wife, but as for my own part I was absolutely rejected. She was fairer, sir, than the fairest cheese I ever sold, from whence I did all my misfortunes, and the red that adorned her blushing cheeks was ten times more lively than any teary and scarlet. And between you and I, sir, that was the main cause of my wife's reception and my disgrace. 
whereupon I wrote a doleful letter to my wife, in all the agonies of one in the deepest despair. "'Tis very well,' she said to the messenger. "'I have some little knowledge of the man. I have heard say no one sells better green cheeses than he does. Desire him next time he comes to bring a small parcel with him, and let him know I'll take care he should be punctually paid. In the height of my misfortunes, I determined to seek a redress in a court of equity. I had but six ounces of gold left, to where I went for a fee to my counsellor, two to my lawyer, who took my cause in hand, and the other two to the judge's clerk. Notwithstanding what I had done, my cause was not so much as commenced, and I had already dispersed more money than all my cheeses and my wife with them were worth. I returned, therefore, to my night of habitation, with a full resolution to sail it for the ransom of my wife. My little cot with the appurtenance was worth about three score ounces of gold, but as the purchasers found I was necessitous, and drove to my last shifts, the first whom I applied to offered me thirty ounces, the second twenty, and the third but ten. Just as I had come to terms of accommodation with one of them, the prince of Hyrcania came to Babylon, and swept all before him. My little cottage, with all its furniture, was first plundered of all that was valuable, and at last reduced to ashes. Having thus lost my money, my wife, and my house, I withdrew to this desert, where you see me. I have since endeavoured to get my bread by fishing, but the fish, as well as all mankind, desert me. I scarce catch one in a day. I am half starved, and had it not been for your unexpected benevolence and generosity, I had been at the bottom of the river before this. This long detail of particulars, however, was not delivered without several interruptions. For, said Zadig, with an abundance of warmth and confusion, have you not heard, sir, of what has become of the Queen Astarta? No, sir, not I, said the disconsolate fisherman, but this I know to my sorrow, that neither the Queen nor Zadig ever paid me the least consideration in the world for my cream cheeses, that my dear spouse is taken from me, and that I am drove to the very brink of despair. I am verily persuaded, said Zadig, that you will not lose all your money. I have heard much talk of that same Zadig. They say he is very honest, and that if ever he returns to Babylon, as tis to be hoped he will, he'll discharge his debts with interest like a man of honour. But as for your wife, who appears to be, to be no better than a wagtail, never take the trouble, if you'll take my advice, to hunt after her any more. Be ruled! and make the best of your way to Babylon. I shall be there before you, as I shall ride, and you will be on foot. Make your applications to the illustrious Cader. Tell him you met his friend upon the road, and stay there till I come. Observe my orders, and it is very probable it may turn out to your advantage. O oh, puissant Oresmad, continued he, you have made me, tis true, an instrument of comfort to this poor man, but what friend will you raise for me to alleviate my sorrows? Having uttered this short expostulation, he gave the distressed fisherman one full moiety of all the money he brought with him out of Arabia. The fisherman, thunderstruck and transported with joy at so unexpected a benefaction, kissed the feet of Cador's friend, and cried out, Sure you are a messenger of heaven sent down to be my saviour. In the meantime, Zadig every now and then asked him questions, and wept as he asked them. What, sir, said the fisherman, can you, who are so bountiful a benefactor, be in distress yourself? Alas, said he, friend, I am a hundred times more unhappy than thou art. But pray, sir, said the good man, how can it possibly be that he, who is so lavish of his favours, should be overwhelmed with greater misfortunes than the man he so generously relieves? Your great uneasiness, said he, arose from a narrowness of your circumstances, but mine proceeds from an internal and much deeper cause. Pray, sir, says the fisherman, has Orkin robbed you of your wife? 
This interrogatory put Zadok in a moment upon a retrospection of all his past adventures. He recollected the whole series of his misfortunes, commencing from that of the eunuch and the huntsman to his arrival at the freebooter's castle. Alas, said he to the fisherman, Arkin, tis true, deserves severely to be punished. But for the generality we find such worthless barbarians are the favourites of fortune. Be that, however, as it will, go as I bade you, to my friend Cader, and wait there till I come. They took their leave, the fisherman blessing his perpetuous stars, and Zadig cursing every step he went, the hour he was born. End of chapter 14 Recording by Andy from Inverarnon Web address is melis, M-E-L-Y-S dot W-S